The U.S. Space Force has granted CNN rare access uh, to its Mission Control Center. Our chief national security correspondent, Jim Schuto, has an exclusive look inside. Inside Mission Control at Buckley Space Force Base in Aurora, Colorado, Space Force Guardians, as they're known, fly the nation's missile warning satellites. Using infrared sensors, these satellites, orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth, scour the planet 24-7 for missile launches and nuclear detonations. We never stop, always vigilant, and we've never failed because that's how important this mission is to our nation. We provide decision quality data, to tactical warfighters on the ground to save their lives. This satellite dish is in touch with missile warning satellites deployed in what's known as geosynchronous orbit. If those warning satellites detect a launch anywhere on the surface of the planet, it beams that information back down to this ground station instantaneously at the speed of light. And then Space Force sends that information, that warning around the world to U.S. forces deployed abroad or here on the U.S. homeland. In January 2020, these satellites sprang into action, detecting multiple missiles from Iran, targeting the Al-Assad air base in Iraq. Before those missiles rained down, within minutes, Space Force had delivered a life-saving warning to U.S. units on the ground. Space Force Specialist Sally Stevens was on duty. It is lightning fast. Right, and quick enough for them to take action to protect protect themselves. Absolutely, especially in the, in the Al-Assad night. Not very often do we get reminded of where our end data gets to, and that night was a, a shocking reality. Missile warning satellites are just a fraction of the hundreds of U.S. government and commercial satellites monitored and defended by the guardians of the Space Force today. Defended because U.S. adversaries led by Russia and China have deployed weapons to disable or destroy them. Space is a warfighting domain. It's the reason that we stood up the United States Space Force as a separate service. So each and every day, we're training our operators to deter conflict, but if deterrence fails, to compete and win in space. The U.S. has far more satellites than any other nation, some 2,500 compared to 431 for China and 168 for Russia. And a whole range of U.S. military technologies depend on them. Satellites help warships and aircraft navigate and communicate. Missile suspension released. Help smart bombs and guided missiles hit their targets. Spook 4-1, we got some squirters running up the ridge line. Uh, help warfighters monitor threats on land, sea, and in the air. There's nothing we do as a joint force, whether it's humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, or combat that isn't enabled by space. More than many Americans realize, civilian technologies are equally dependent on space. The nation's constellation of GPS satellites, flown by 2nd Space Operations Squadron at Schriever Space Force Base in Colorado Springs, is the backbone of multiple critical infrastructures. The financial sectors rely on positioning and timing information for precise banking operations and transactions. Our transportation sector for positioning and timing, air and land, sea and rail, all rely on the global positioning system to be able to execute our critical infrastructure. The danger for the U.S. is that greater dependence on space equals greater vulnerability to attacks in space. China is launching kidnapper satellites with grappling arms capable of plucking satellites out of orbit. Russia is deploying kamikaze satellites capable of ramming and destroying U.S. space assets. And Russia now has a new space weapon that Space Force dubs the nesting doll. Back in 2017, Russia launched a satellite, and it opened up, and another satellite came out. And then it opened up, and a projectile came out. That projectile is designed to kill U.S. satellites. So in 2019, uh, they did the same thing. But this time, they put it up next to one of our satellites. And then uh, we started talking about it. You warned them away. Yeah. We described what is safe and professional behavior and, and it's important today there's no rules in space it's the wild wild west as for the u.s weaponizing space force wants to avoid a space arms race weapons are a last resort from the u.s perspective we would prefer to the domain to, to remain free of conflict uh, but like in any other domain like air land sea or and now space will be ready to protect and defend adversaries have already attempted to use space weapons to temporarily disable u.s satellites Space war is not science fiction, but a battle already underway.
you know, the weapon that is already in space as well is lasers, directed energy weapons. You know, the age of lasers in space has already begun. And not just Russia and China, but other countries, Iran, North Korea, they're also attempting uh, to target our assets in space, deploy weapons. It's a real threat. Yeah, excellent, excellent reporting. I learned a lot. Thanks so much for doing it. Thanks for having me. Tim Shudo reporting for us.